स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वी गुड स्टार्ट विथ द नेक्स्ट स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मूला विच इज वाई इज इक्वल टू ई रेस टू ए एक्स इन टू कॉस बी एक्स प्लस सी नाउ द डेरिवेशन फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मूला इज एक्सैक्टली सेम एज वी हैव डन फॉर वाई इज इक्वल टू ई रेस टू ए एक्स इन टू साइन बी एक्स प्लस सी स्टूडेंट्स बिफोर आई प्रोसीड विद द सोल्यूशन बिफोर यू वॉच दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई वॉन्ट यू टू ट्राई द डेरिवेशन ऑफ वाई इज इक्वल टू ई रेस टू ए एक्स इन टू कॉस बी एक्स प्लस सी ऑन योर ओन द रीजन फॉर दिस इज सिंस दिस डेरिवेशन इज एक्सैक्टली सेम इट विल गिव यू अ वेरी गुड प्रैक्टिस टू फाइंड द प्रूफ ऑन योर ओन एंड इट विल डेवलप योर नॉलेज ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्म सो स्टूडेंट्स आई वॉन्ट यू टू बिगिन फॉर to fall once you are done with your proof then what you can do is you can again play this entire video to check whether you have got the right steps or not so students let's proceed with the derivation so as i said i have the function now as y is equal to what e raised to ax into cos bx plus c so i'm going to proceed in the exact same manner as i have done for y is equal to e raised to ax into sin bx plus c so let's write our function y is equal to e raised to ax into cos bx plus c so that's my first relation isn't it so i'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x first of all so let's differentiate both sides with respect to x so i get y1 is equal to what i definitely going to make use of the u into v rule here so second function i am going to treat as it is so cos of bx plus c let's keep as it is and differentiate e raised to ax so i write here e raised to ax into a because i know the derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x this is not e raised to x this is e raised to ax so in place of x there is a function of x x so you need to differentiate the function of x ahead isn't it using the chain rule or i can say the composite function so e raised to ax derivative is going to be e raised to ax into the derivative of ax which is a and the second term cos is going to remain as it is so i write here cos of bx plus c as it is then plus students plus there is a plus remember then there is a plus e raised to ax as it is derivative of cos derivative of cos x we know it is minus of sin x in between i had a plus sign derivative of cos is going to come minus sin so the plus in between now becomes minus so this is very important students there was a plus sign and now have you realized how the plus sign has become the minus sign the reason for that is a derivative of cos so derivative of cos was minus sin minus sin what you don't have x you have a function of x which is bx plus c so again you should be differentiating bx plus c with respect to x the answer is going to come very simple it is going to become b again from the two terms what do you find common so i can take out e raised to ax common isn't it what is left now you are left with a into cos of bx plus c minus of b into sin of bx plus c i again take the numbers a and b so let's take the numbers a and b there is no need to consider the negative sign ignore the negative sign even if you consider the negative sign it is not going to help us anything because i am going to anyway go to do the square of the numbers a and minus b so what could be the square of minus b it will be plus b square so it does not matter whether i consider the positive and the negative sign so let's keep the negative sign as it is let's keep it untouched so i just take the numbers i will do the square of them so i can and say consider a square plus b square now i know nothing is going to happen to a square plus b square i have to write a square plus b square as it is but can i write a square plus b square as root of a square plus b square the whole square and then i divide throughout by root of a square plus b square the whole square isn't it so i get a square upon in the denominator what is going to come in the denominator you are going to get root of a square plus b square the whole square so i get a upon root of a square plus b square the whole square then plus students b square upon this term i get plus b upon root of 
a square plus b square the whole square it is going to become equal to what the right hand side is definitely going to become equal to 1 so this is now a upon root of a square plus b square the whole square plus b upon root of a square plus b square the whole square it is equal to 1 so if you take two numbers do the square of them add them and if the result is going to come 1 then definitely one of the number represents sine at that time the other number will represent cos or I can do the reverse also the first number can represent cos and the second number can represent sine for the same angle isn't it so here I can take a upon root of a square plus b square as either sine or cos if I take this as sine the second term becomes cos if I take the first term as cos then the second term becomes sine but this will be decided by this particular term observe carefully if I take the term of a as a sine it becomes sine cos minus then b has to be taken as cos isn't it so it becomes sine cos minus cos sine sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta is the compound angle formula for sine alpha minus beta what do i need i need cos so a should not be sine b should not be cos on the contrary it should be the reverse way a should be cos b should be sine so this becomes cos cos minus sine sine students cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta what is the formula it is cos of alpha plus beta isn't it so now you can understand that the numbers a and b should be taken as what the term that is associated with cos that is a should be taken as cos itself and the term associated with sine which is b should be taken as sine itself so here this a upon root of a square plus b square let us say a upon root of a square plus b square is taken as say cos phi so from here what does a become equal to a becomes equal to root of a square plus b square into cos phi so a is root of a square plus b square cos phi likewise students b upon root of a square plus b square i am going to take it as sine phi so from here what does b become equal to it becomes root of a square plus b square into sine phi again let's divide the two terms i get b upon a don't divide it a upon b then you get cos phi upon sine phi that becomes cot phi it is always mandatory to keep the angles into standard forms sine cos and tan these three trigonometric ratios are the standard trigonometric ratios so i'm going to divide b upon a so if i write b upon a so the root and root cancels you get sine phi upon cos phi so you get here sine phi upon cos phi so that's tan phi so you get phi is equal to what it becomes tan inverse of b upon a tan inverse of b upon a so now let's go back to this y1 i'm going to call this relation as say second equation so what happens in the second equation now so y1 therefore becomes equal to e raised to ax into what is a students what a you are going to replace with a is going to get replaced with root of a square plus b square into cos phi so i write here root of a square plus b square into cos phi so that's the value of a into cos of bx plus c isn't it so into i write here cos of bx plus c then there is a negative sign negative sign then what's the value of b b is root of a square plus b square sine phi so i write here root of a square plus b square into sine phi and then what is the next term you have sine of bx plus c now you can certainly say from the two terms root of a square plus b square is common so i take out root of a square plus b square common you have e raised to ax into so let's write it in the correct order you get bx plus c into cos phi minus sine of bx plus c 
into sin phi. So it certainly looks like cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. So that is going to become the formula of cos of A plus B, isn't it? Cos A cos B minus sin A sin B becomes a formula for cos A plus B. So this becomes root of A square plus B square into A raised to AX cos of BX plus C plus phi. That's the value of y1 student. So is it okay to write the terms like this root of a square plus b square raised to 1 into a raised to ax into cos of bx plus c plus 1 phi. If I ask you to get me y2 is it going to be the exact same way you get root of a square plus b square one more time now isn't it. So you get root of a square plus b square the whole square don't write it a square plus b square now here just keep it whole square into a raised to ax into cos of bx plus c plus 2 times of phi isn't it so i can call this y1 as now third equation this y2 can be called as the fourth equation so now is it possible for us to generalize the terms so i can say in general I can write yn is equal to what? yn becomes equal to root of a square plus b square raised to n into a raised to ax into cos of bx plus c plus n phi where students I'm going to put root of a square plus b square as what? Let us say root of a square plus b square is taken as r and we know that phi is what? It is tan inverse of b upon a. So I can say let r is taken as root of a square plus b square and we know that phi is tan inverse of b upon a. So what does yn become equal to? So students I can say yn becomes equal to r raised to n e raised to ax into cos of bx plus c plus n phi. This is the nth derivative of y where what was y? So y was e raised to ax into cos bx plus c. So did you observe that this particular derivation is exactly same as we have done the derivation of y is equal to e raised to ax into sine bx plus c. So students practice both the derivations very 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 properly. Now once these two derivations are done we can proceed ahead with Two more formulas where in place of e raised to ax you are going to get k raised to x. So the two standard formulas are going to be y is equal to k raised to x into sin bx plus c and y is equal to k raised to x into cos bx plus c. So students that was all about this particular derivation. Now let's proceed ahead with the next two formulas.